Hey y'all, Tracy here with Just Dig It Farms and I am in my garden this week. My happy, happy, happy place. My garden is got to be my favorite place on earth. I love my garden and my farm and I am here this week. We've been gone a lot and got a few more trips to take. So I've kind of not been here that much. But every opportunity that I get, I am in my garden. I hope to be able to be out here whenever I can the rest of this week and try to really get my fall garden planted and cleaned up and looking good and ready. So I wanna bring you guys along with me, hang out in the garden with me and let's get some stuff done. What you doing to them? Working on these raised beds and uh, just getting some some chores done. I've been just, wanting to get this done. We had some, uh, Tracy got some of this uh, recycled wood, it's treated wood. We got down at uh, uh, Holly's in, uh, down at the University of Montevallo. She has a little garden down there and people kind of donate their trash and rubbish to her and we kind of, Reclaimed it. She let us know and I went and nabbed it. But we're using it. What you doing? Just reinforcing these this old recycled tin we had too. And it's kind of wavy and it'll cut you if you're when you run your hands across. So I'm raising up this wood a little bit higher, kind of flush, so my dogs are in my screws. Lou. What's up, Clyde? Come here, boys. But uh anyway, just trying to make it tighten up with this wave and make it get out of there Clyde make it look a lot better we got a busy day today honeydew list a busy day Mom. I have no idea. I think it's broccoli. <laughs> what she said earlier. Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. <laughs> yes, Brussels sprouts. That'll do. Let me look at this. Other side. Lime time. Oh. Brussels sprouts. Long Island improved. I'm planting my garlic. All of this garlic right here is bulbs that I had saved from my spring garlic that I grew and harvested. And actually, it's garlic bulbs from two years ago that I grew and saved and just kept replanting. So this is California garlic and Spanish Rojas. And I've been growing this garlic now for, maybe it's even three years I've been growing it. So I got these garlic bulbs from uh, Petals from the Past and I've just been growing this garlic and it's working really good and it stores really well. It's been storing great for me. I still have a whole basket of garlic in the house to cook with and I just collected all these bulbs to plant today. So what I did, I prepped this bed with my broad fork 
and some compost and I made me some little trenches down the side of this trellis because this trellis next year, this is where my tomatoes will be growing. This past year, I had peas and beans growing on this trellis all year. And next year, I'll have tomatoes growing on it. And I like to plant my garlic and my onions with my tomatoes. So on this side of the trellis, I've got two rows of garlic. And then I'll plant my tomatoes inside of the trellis there. And that way I'll be able to get to my tomatoes while my garlic's growing out here. So I'm just gonna stick my bulbs in this little trench. You can plant garlic fairly close together. I plant it maybe like about four to six inches apart, if that. I'm just gonna place them in this trench, cover it with some soil, and let it grow. Garlic's one of the easiest things I think you can grow. rain coming today and I'm super grateful for that because we desperately need rain but I'm out here this morning Chase and I are trying to finish these beds and get cover crop planted before the rain comes so we're kind of rushing this morning still working on the bed prep and uh, definitely want to get these cover crops in the ground today this is our bed prep process um, I come through and pull all of the weeds and spent plants from the spring and summer garden out of here, out of each bed, and then come back and we're doing this broad fork. What that does is it just lifts the soil, kind of mixes in the soil. We added a soil amendment. We added some lime and some benzonite clay earlier this fall. So that's just kind of mixing that in and it's... Um, aerating the soil. It's just getting oxygen in the soil and kind of mixing it all in without actually tilling it and killing any microbial life that's in my soil. So these beds in the Potage Garden, we do no-till, no-till gardening, um, but we're constantly adding back to the beds. So clean out the beds for all the weeds and spent plants, do the broad fork through it, and then I form the rows in the in each individual individual bed. I form the rows the way I want them to be, and I'm already thinking ahead for the spring and summer garden as well. So I'm thinking about what I want to plant in these beds for the fall, and I'm thinking about what I want to plant in these beds for when spring and summer comes. Um, I've already got my plan together for my spring and summer garden as well for next year. So I'm keeping that in mind as I'm forming these rows and just uh, creating designs and interest within the beds of how things are gonna be planted. And then I'm going to my chicken run and scooping out um, the compost that they've made me and just adding a layer of that to each row in the bed. Our chickens are the best garden partners. Not only do they provide us eggs, but they provide us the best compost and fertilizer.
this is what you call getting your soil right. And the neat thing about it is our chickens are on board with us. Because <laughs> when we say just dig it farms, buddy, they be digging. Then I'm getting the grass clippings. Gene Bush hogged the fields. And when he did, he pushed it all up into um, mounds for me. And I've been letting that sit and just kind of age. And I'm using those grass clippings from our farm in the pathways in between the rows of these beds. And that way I know exactly what went into that mulch, what's going into my garden. I know where the compost come from, it come from my chickens. I know where the mulch come from, it come from our pasture and nothing has been sprayed with any kind of chemicals or harmful toxic chemicals at all. Nothing here has been sprayed with that. So I know that I'm adding good things back to my soil. After I get the grass clippings in my rows or actually in my pathways in between my rows in each bed, then I come back and water it all in really, really good. And then we plant. I got a helper today. Hello. <laughs> well, there's a wheel, there's a way. Is this called Lazy Man Garden? Lazy Woman Garden. <laughs> if you want to do it bad enough, you'll find a way to do it. That's right. Mom's watering these beds in, and we're fixing to plant some. I don't know what all we're going to plant here yet. Broccoli. Probably cauliflower from the chair to the dirt on her knees. <laughs> and I'm not making her do this, y'all. She's choosing to do this. Don't get mad at me. So, what you planting? Red acre cabbage that we got from Haas Tools. And we're going to put up some slaw and some cabbage to cook. We can have sauerkraut and weenies. We can do kraut. It's gonna be enjoyable meals uh, for the following year. Oh, get up, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad for 75 years old. Not bad at all. Now what you plant? Broccoli. Woohoo! Green magic is what you're planting right there. And then on the other row is Godzilla. And that's my process for preparing the beds in the fall. And actually when spring comes, it's gonna be much easier when it's, when it's go time in the spring and everything's rocking and rolling out here. The bees are swarming, the goats are kidding, the, it's time to plant the garden, everything's coming alive. It's really, really busy in the spring then the hard work of the bed prep is pretty much done in the potage garden. What I'll do is I'll pull out any fall and winter plants that are spent and done and add another little layer, kind of tighten up my rows back again, add a little layer of compost again and plant the spring and summer garden. But the hard, hard work is already done by the time spring comes. That's, this is why it's taken me so long to get these beds prepped and to get my fall and winter garden in. Plus, I haven't really been here a whole lot. I've been um, going a lot and doing interviews for In Her Boots, which I'm so glad you guys are enjoying that. I'm running out of time, my window for my fall and winter garden to get it planted. So this morning, I am hopeful to get a whole lot done out here today before the rain, I hope. All right, this bed here is completed and I got a major problem. Those two rows were turnip greens. You can see them coming up. So these two rows are turnip greens. This row is rutabagas. And Can you see the damage out here? I have an armadillo again. Looks like I have a whole family of armadillos. They are destroying 
my beds. What I have done and worked hard on and got planted, the armadillos are coming here and just destroying everything. They're tearing this bed all up. Clyde, you need to do a better job getting rid of these armadillos, buddy. Every day I come out here and some of my little plants are pulled up. So they've pulled up some cauliflowers and cabbages. And now they've started on this bed. This is where beets and carrots are. Look what they've done. My little beets and carrots are coming up slowly but surely. And now the stupid armadillo is moved over here to this bed. <gasps> Every fall, these stupid armadillos come in and just destroy my garden. So yesterday I went to Petals from the Past and had a meeting with Jason talking about our YouTubers meet and greet that we did last year for the Antiques in the Garden event at Petals. And we're gonna be doing that again this year. I'll get, as we get the details together, I will definitely be letting you guys know about that. But while I was there, I picked up some armadillo scrap. This stuff really works, you guys. It really, really does. And it's all natural, it's all organic. And it has, I um, can't remember the ingredients, here it is. The ingredients is castor oil, thyme, rosemary, white pepper, garlic, citronella, peanut holes, and fish oil. And this stuff really works. It's hard to get, but it really works. Armadillo scram. So after it finishes raining today, I'm definitely going to be putting this armadillo scram out here in my beds because the past two years it has worked and I'm super excited that I found something that works. I guess they just don't like the smell of it. So anyways, um, I'm hoping it works again this year or otherwise I'm not gonna have a fall garden. It's a constant war out here in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> armadillos, possums, deer, neighbors' cows. It's a constant, constant, constant battle out here to be able to have my garden to grow. We've got to get this fence around this potage garden. It's just going to be so incredibly expensive to fence in the whole potage garden, so I don't know when it's going to happen, but we really need to get it going soon. <laughs> Chase is raking this bed out where we went through with the broad fork and we've added some compost over here from my friend Holly's community garden. And he's just raking it all in. And these first four beds here, that one, that one, that one, and that one are all going to be done in cover crops this fall and winter. Last year, I did the beds back there in cover crops, and I did the beds up here in the fall and winter garden. And this year, I'm flip-flopping it. And back there is my fall and winter garden. Up here is my cover crops. So I'm constantly rotating cover crops out here in my potage garden in the beds. And that way, I'm just adding back to the soil Every year, I'm working it in and adding nutrients and nitrogen back to the soil for the next crop that I'm going to grow. Because when you're growing fruits and vegetables and herbs and all of these things, they take a lot of um, nutrients from the soil to develop those fruit and vegetable plants. So you're depleting that soil as you're growing your food. And you need to constantly be adding nutrients back to your soil and the cover crops is a wonderful way to do that plus it keeps weeds down in those beds so that when i'm ready to plant in the uh, spring and summer all i have to do is just come and work that into the soil and add, add a, then i add a little bit of compost and then i plant it and i've got a lot of good nutrients added back into my soil and I don't have a lot of weeds to have to deal with come spring when I'm ready to start planting. We got our first four beds ready and Chase is watering them down. And I got my Haas seed order here. 
I got Marvel chickpeas, broadleaf mustard. These, this is a good cover crop, like a biofumigant cover crop that will kill a lot of insects and soil-borne diseases. So that's a good, good cover crop. Uh, winter rye and frosty bursim clover. And this one is supposed to be uh, cold hardy, pretty cold hardy. So these are my four cover crops. It was a great week in the potage garden this week. Uh, everybody pitched in and helped me and we got all the beds prepped. We got the cover crops planted and we got most all of the fall vegetables planted. Um, I've still got to clean up and work on the medicinal herb border, but for the most part, we got a lot done in the garden this week. And then that weekend, we headed down to the beach for a few days to Pensacola, Florida. Um, my mom works for one of her clients actually owns a condo on the beach and she gets a week a year at the condo at, in Pensacola so we went down for the weekend and then Gene took me over to my mom's condo and he had to get back for work and Chase and myself my mom, my brother, sister-in-law, and my sweet little nephew all stayed at the condo for the week and just enjoyed the beach. And it was uh, a nice time getting to spend some time with all of them. Chance came over one of the days. He had one day off and he came over and hung out with us for a little while at the beach and at the pool. And towards the end of the week, Renee's parents actually came down to see them. Renee's parents and her sister and brother-in-law and their three children, and we got to have dinner with them. So it was just a great, fun time to be able to hang out with family. Well, as always, guys, thank you so much for joining me as we worked in the potage garden and a little time on the beach. God bless you, and I will see y'all on the next video.